Welcome back, guys. Nice to see ya. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Liv opens its uh, season at a familiar place, Maya Coba in Riviera Maya, uh, Mexico. It's going to be a big one. I can't wait. Site most recently of the 2022 PGA Tour event, the Worldwide Technology at Maya Coba Golf Classic. Nate will tell us a little bit more on that in a little bit. While the PGA Tour begins its Florida swing at the Honda Classic. Sorry, Honda. Just not. Are, are you watching that? I, I'm. I, I'll be watching something else. Are you gonna watch oh. it? <laughs> I was wondering if you were. You couldn't couldn't find it with a searchlight, huh? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, good to be here thanks for having me nice to be back uh, this episode i think is going to look a little bit different you know typically we've been doing a lot of these um week previews right tournament previews well live opens this season so we've got something fresh something exciting you know kind of on the horizon here and and you and you nailed it we're not doing a preview of the honda classic which is which is true we're not um but we're also not i don't know i see this is coming out a day before the honda two days before the whatever this the mayakoba i don't know it's four day tournaments you know three day tournaments i don't know it's a whole Sorry it's a begin. whole thing this is, already um, this is this it's gonna it's gonna be back and forth <laughs> like this, the there. entire the entire episode i'm gonna take out my um, shirt <laughs> okay, Joel Damon. Wait, that's a that's a yeah, that's uh, a full swing reference. A little there. bit of foreshadowing for, yeah, for what's yeah. to come a little later. Uh, but we should maybe start off with a bit of news. Here's what I'm kind of thinking. You have the list of live like latest live defectors. They're the latest signings by live, the, right? Yeah, the one that I'm most excited about is is the first one you got listed here, Mito Pereira. I think that's the biggest name of the, the four or five. From from Chile. Am I supposed to say Chile? Is it Ch- is it Ch- Chile? Ch- Chile? Um, he's... Did you Have you seen the Mito Pereira episode of Full Swing? Or not yet? No, I I'm on know. episode four. Just finished the final okay. one. He's a, he's a focus. Um, so, yeah, he, you just he's a focus of that episode. You're just not there yet. But... We know that Joaquin Neiman is there. They're both from Chile, from Chile. So um, it's not surprising that he went. I don't. I don't know. He's he wants to hang out with his buddies. I, that that one does make a lot of sense. He did come super close to winning the PGA Championship last year. If you do you remember what happened? He put it in the water on 18 and made double. I, and I don't was, remember that. Uh-uh. And then Justin Thomas play it was him and him and will zalatoris in a playoff on the after the round but uh mito Pereira made double to play himself out of the playoffs which is just which gut wrenching <laughs> but it's just how it worked out so anyway that's that's mito who's who else is on there uh you got mito sebastian thomas uh brandon and danny Daily, yeah, Brandon so Steele, Thomas Peters. I, I don't know why I didn't say last names because they're like LeBron and Madonna, really. Yeah, you know, they're they're pretty these up there. guys. <laughs> and that's kind of my point. We have, we being Team PJ Tour, have designated events that kick ass. The last two weeks have been awesome. And what's Liv's retort? Brendan Steele, Danny Lee. I'm I'm sorry, man. It just not like a good for you. I don't know what to say. Well, here's the thing. Okay, I, I I'm I'm just gonna pull up the rankings here for the viewers to see for this Honda mm. Classic. That's I'm not hanging my hat on this week at so, all. Oh, why why is that? Oh, because your big names aren't playing. Because they gotta be, they gotta have down weeks at some point. They're playing. You don't get that with a live. There is no down week. You know, what you do get with live. Tape delay. Sung Sung J M. 
is the favorite. Followed by Shane Lowry. And Shane's a name. Shane's not a nobody. Danny but... McCarthy, Min Woo Lee. Matt, oh God, thank God Matt Kuchar's playing. I didn't think he was going to be there. <laughs> and Billy Horschel. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Thanks for, thanks for showing up, Billy. This might be the only event that he has a shot at actually winning. I'm just... That's... That's not wrong. Okay, so so you're not wrong. But let's let's look at the six weeks that we are in the middle of. Waste management. Genesis. Honda, for sure. Puerto Rico next week, for sure. Down. Two two that are pretty weak. And then we just hit it with uh the Arnold Palmer at Bay Hill and the players. I mean four of the six weeks, you're gonna have Rory, Speeth, Thomas rom homa battling it out man it's gonna be it's gonna be great i can't i can't wait for it you know what's also gonna be great is watching cam smith dustin johnson the old lefty that everyone used to you know be so so happy to say mito Pereira. Brooks Kepka, Bryson DeChambeau, Sergio Garcia, Patrick Reed, Paul Casey, Bubba Watson. These are people like you literally watched and, and somewhat idolized growing up. But now because they're part of Live, their golf game is... is I, can't, I can't watch these guys play golf. Dude, do you not remember that Phil Mickelson won the PGA Championship and people were losing their minds going nuts. Yeah, Phil, let's go! And then he joins Liv and they're like, no, Phil, we hate you now. We hate you. Your yeah. legacy is forever tainted for making us more money on the PGA Tour. We hate you for that. Yeah. No, it's... It's deeper than that. Come on. You know it's deeper than that. And we're not even going to talk about Patrick Reed. Okay, I get it. Sergio, not a big fan. I mean, but they're still... I mean, these guys were winners in the PGA, so... Um, we should also, since we're since we're talking about the PGA Championship and Phil Mickelson, it is noteworthy that... Uh, it might have been as recently as today, uh, Wednesday, February 22nd, that the PGA Championship said that they are going to allow live players to play. They were sort of the last domino to fall to announce... They we knew to. that the Masters did. We, oh, And that's my point, too. Like, they had to. They can't have... We can't have three of the majors letting them play and then one just not. Like, that's that would be weird. Uh, it's it's a... I don't know. Like I'm, it's just... You have to. You have to. It'll be interesting to see if any of them do. If any of them do win a major. You know, I, I could see... I could see Cam Smith doing it. And I could see Dustin Johnson doing it. But I don't... I don't know about anyone else. God, I just hope Bryson, Bryson DeChambeau wins it or Phil Did Mickelson. Did you just call him Bryce it? Yeah. Did you just call him Bryce it? That might be his new nickname. Phil Mickelson to just go in there. Uh, Kevin Na, you know what I mean? Brooks Kepka. I, I just I just hope one of these guys <laughs> finishes like... I mean, if, if they don't finish first, I, I'm, I'm not going to hang my head on that. But if two of these guys finish in the top ten... It's like, okay, these guys are playing at a major with the best p- players in the, in the world. They're making cuts and placing in the top 10. Like, are you going to sit there and tell me that live golf doesn't matter when they got... Yeah. No, you know what I mean? I, I, I hear that. I just don't... I don't know. The, the, the CW, like their moves, you know, they're going to go... They're gonna go golf, but louder, right? And the things that they've done, I just don't see it. It feels like a USFL thing to me. Golf, but louder feels like the Phoenix Open. The PGA Tour is already doing yeah, exactly what Liv thought they were, or what Liv wants to do. It's contradictive because Rory and Tiger are trying to do the same thing, bring excitement to golf with this stupid <laughs> We don't even know what it is yet. It's it's a right. match with so two people going head to head. We just still have no idea what. Cool. Like I'd rather watch Patrick Mahomes, Josh. If I'm gonna watch like not real golf but real golf, I'd rather watch some amateurs go at it and 
you know what I mean, do something like that versus them make a make up some league for Xander and Rose to go at it now. Well, and I, I think that probably can lead us into our next bit of news, this TGL. Um, which I, to be honest, I'm not even sure off the top of my head what TGL stands for. Uh, do you have that link? Isn't and then it if to- you just... Total Golf Live? Is that what it is? I have I, no I, idea. I it just it sounded... It's... But if <laughs> you scroll down to paragraph, I want to say it was... I think it was seven. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Really going no, that's... It. That's not it. Presence, everything. No, that, well, you that's got, because it's... You got Xander and Rose. I mean, who who's who do they, who are they going to be signing up for this thing next? Like, are they, is this stuff that these guys have, excuse me, have to volunteer for? No, it's not. It's not like the Boys and Girls Club. They don't have to get volunteer hours. Gosh. Um, this link, you know what it did? It screwed me. It went to a different headline. Uh, well, I got it. I got it up right now. TGL's and... approach of merging technology and golf is innovative thinking that I, be- I believe it will help uh, the sport evolve and continue to appeal to a border base of fan- a broader base of fans, Rose said. Yeah, so like that doesn't tell me at all what it is though. You know what I mean? Uh, it's teams. Six teams of three PGA Tour players in head-to-head match play. Tech-infused venue. A first-of-its-kind venue for golf enabled by a data-rich virtual course combined with tech-infused short game complex. Tech so are they in- hitting into, into a simulator? Like, I don't... What does tech-infused mean? Uh, you know, a um, when they do, like, uh, the football stuff where they're like he has a 10 percent chance of catching this thing you know mm. is it something like that tech enabled fan Could experience high energy green side fan experience with every shot live within a two out within a two hour prime time televised match that i think is is a positive actually like yeah but have... this this yeah but you're like agreeing with what live did but because live went over here to do their own thing it's it's like hey live no if yeah <laughs> if phil mickelson and greg norman started this they'd do the same freaking thing to them they'd revoke their revoke their tour cards and say no you guys can't no yeah no they they probably would because it's not under the pga tour umbrella and ultimately here's what's happening half of the guys aren't there each week okay it's not half it's probably a third. A third of the legitimate contenders aren't there each week. You know what I mean? Does that seem does that seem fair to say? Like and and the same is going to be true at Mayakoba this week with the live. There you can't look at that and go, well, okay, so Cam Smith won, but did he beat John Rahm? Did he beat Max Homa? Did he beat Roy Mac? You know what I mean? It's the same just as we say the same thing about Cam Smith on the other side. It sucks that it's divided. But I mean, it it's it's, it's not really because you're you, you look at the the list of golfers that are golfing in the Honda Classic this week versus the golfers that are golfing in Live. Well, yeah, but that's by design. I mean, they know that they can't. Live knew that they couldn't schedule Mayakoba last week. We had a freaking shootout, major field type event last week at Riviera. That was awesome. I mean, coming down the stretch like that with with Rom and, and uh, Max Homa battling it out, we watched it at uh, X Golf. Mm-hmm. That was super fun. Like you, there's no way that they would intentionally the guys that live schedule an event that week, right? Or like up against a waste management or something like that. Like, well, a right. designated event in 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 general because they know it'd be tough to to get the viewers. So I mean, they're right. kudos to them for picking the right weekend to do it. But yes, okay, I'll, I'll go as far as saying if a designated event against a live, of course the PGA Tour is going to have all the viewers and the popularity and win that contest every every day. They're going to win that. They're going to win that contest. They have a 10 times better TV contract, too. Yeah, they have a, a terrific con- – and here's what live doesn't have. They don't have history. They don't have a legacy. They don't have that yet. 
and they, and they they won't get that for a while. And that's one thing that I think is awesome about these guys still being able to play in the majors that they can still protect and uphold a legacy of their own by making sure that they're placing in. They don't have to. They don't have to win the Masters. They don't have to win the Open. They don't have to win. They don't have to win that stuff. Yes, would it be awesome for Liv and and put a big staple and and. These guys' this golf game, they're only playing four games a weekend and stuff like that. Yeah, it would, it would, or three days, three days, three versus the four. Yeah, it, it would, it would be a big statement for them to, to win. But if these guys are placing in the top five, top 10, and, you know, a majority of them are making the cut, that's saying that these guys are still respectable golfers and can hang with the best outside of live, outside of, you know, the PGA Tour, just the best in the world. Right, and I still think that this year is a is a big year for them because it's like, who are they going to get? Because you're not moving the needle with um, Brendan Steele and Danny Lee and whatever, these signings. You need to get, you need to look at the college game and the guys who are destined to be stars. The, the most recent U.S. Amateur uh winner I forgot is it something bennett they need to get him you know what I mean? like start getting some of the guys who would be stars on the pg tour john rom was a college star colin morikawa college star these are the names that need to start going to live if lives going to be if lives going to have any staying power because you're not going to thrive on ian poulter in episode two of full swing i know i'm getting old i can't keep up it was a it was the right move for my family yes that's true but I already have the Champions Tour to watch old guys play golf. You know what I mean? Like it just, it just doesn't move the needle. So it depends on which which direction they end up going. Did you see though? Um, this is this is unfortunate, but some live CW news that came out. Under the agreed upon plan, five of the fourteen live events in twenty twenty three will be broadcast on a tape delay in the United States, including those held in Australia, Singapore, Spain, England, and the Team Championship held in Saudi Arabia. Live events held in North America will also be broadcast on the CW in the 1 to 6 p.m. time window on Saturdays and Sundays. But that window will overlap with the live tournament and therefore will not require a tape delay. Friday coverage from all 14 live events will be exclusive to the CW app. So that means that in a lot of cases, what we're watching, like I can go on Twitter and say, oh, Dustin Johnson shot 65, and then I'll watch it later. Which is a bummer. I don't. I like watching it live and not knowing. You know. I mean, that's a, a good take on it. Just put your phone down. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But still, like the fact that it's out there and it's on tape, like, but we don't put our phones down. Nobody and, does. And to go back, you know, I I think Liv has done a terrific job with signing some huge names. I, I, I don't think any other golf league in the world could come out and, and take a Phil Mickelson, a Dustin Johnson, a Bryson DeChambeau, a, a Cameron Smith, or Cam Smith. You know what I mean? Those are those are huge names in golf. I think everyone's happy to see Patrick Reed leave just because the guy is not... Uh... He's he's golf poison. I, I don't know any other way to put it. I, yeah. um, <laughs> but... Do golf is unique because we're not assigned to a team, but I mean, could you imagine is the, and I go back to this a lot, but is there any scenario in which a football league could start and it would pull, you know, Russell Wilson, um, Pat Mahomes, well, uh, uh, Jamar chase, like Jamar chase. Like, is that, is there any scenario in which those guys leave the, the, organization they play for to go take tons of money and play in a different organization oh yeah absolutely everyone has a price in the live the live proves that now back in the 70s or 60s or whenever it was when there was the usfl and then the nfl um there were two players um that played on donald trump's uh um football team that he signed to the usfl in you know, competitive, competitive, competitiveness with uh, the um, NFL, 
And was one of them? I feel like I'm I'm about to be an idiot when I say this because my timing's probably way off. But was one of them Herschel Walker? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, I'm not then. So, because I, I knew that there was some sort of connection with him running for that Senate seat in Georgia and being a big Trump supporter and what was, going back was to his playing days. Quarterbacks that he signed too. Um, that was a a big big name back then. But he played for the. So Jets. That's like late eighties. Mid nineties. Yeah, and then he 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 sniped this guy that played for the Jets. I don't I don't remember, but it, I mean, it, here's the thing: it takes a lot. Just think think of like a football team trying to go up against NFL, which is a multi billion dollar organization. It would take billions of dollars to do it. The XFL is trying to do it. The USFL is trying to do it, and it seems like every time they get started, some freaking happens. You know, COVID happened and they had to cancel the whole thing and lost millions of dollars and stuff like that. But I mean, they got Josh Gordon, they got AJ McCarron. I mean, they're they're trying to sign names, but those are the misfits in the NFL. And in realistic, in I mean, if any of these guys end up playing good in the XFL, they're like the they're going to be like the minor leagues for the NFL. They're still going to be trying to play show that they can play and then jump up probably to the NFL where they're going to have a future. Right. And Tan- do you see Tanner Morgan, the go- the gopher mm-hmm. quarterback got drafted like eighth or something, which so, is kind of neat. So to try and start a golf league, it's going to take buco bucks just to do it. And that's who that's what live had it. Yeah. That's what they had. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be hard for, John Rahm to have an off year and live to go, hey, come on, I get the carrot, come on over, check it out, see what we got. And then for them to have friends that are over there, you know, John Rahm has friends that are in the live that he was friends with before live started. So to have, it's like you said, the locker room talk, when they all get in the locker room and talk a little bit and stuff like that. And then they Mm -hmm. see that they don't, they're going to make more money and don't have to maybe make more money. But don't have to play that extra day, get to spend more time with their dog, whatever it may be. It's yeah. I mean, we could have this conversation for hours and hours and hours. We could, I, which kind of leads me to a point that I, I thought was interesting. I wrote it on the set list. So, Liv kind of stole Maya Koba away from the PJ Tour. They played there most recently in like, like October, the worldwide technology classic at Mayakoba or whatever however whatever the sponsorship whatever the title was and what I think is interesting is as far as I know at this point that tournament is still on the PGA Tour schedule for later this year like they haven't they haven't um, shut that down and as quick as they were to ban players the minute they hit a tee shot on the live tour you don't want to ban a golf course that jumps over to the live side. And even like the know. courses that Greg Norman, that he, what was that course that he made? Well, this one. Yeah. Oh, Camaleon or whatever. He, he designed this. So like, it makes sense that they would, that they would kind of go that way. But why wouldn't the tour say at that point, we're, do- we're banning you. You can't ever come back to the PGA tour. They did it with all, all the players. Why not do it with courses? It all boils down to money. I'm sure they get some sponsors and, whatever you know whatever they do for the town you know maybe maybe their excuse is not not to ban it because of how much it does for that town you know with the volunteer and the donations and all the stuff that it brings to a town i i'd like to think that the pga tour thinks about that stuff before going hey no we're done we're done with yeah we're we're in you know ruin all those relationships and stuff like that i'm sure there's some of that or contracts that are have to be upheld yeah i mean that could be and and that makes a lot of sense i think in 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 many cases the tpc and blaine and and 3m makes a lot of sense but maya cove is literally like just south of cancun isn't it i think it's like i think it's on the coast i remember driving past it when we were there um it's i just don't know how much they're doing for the community you know <laughs> it just doesn't strike me as you know that angle they're on the hook with the cartel bro there's a lot of going on down there I, I, so I've heard. I've, <laughs> Dude, I it didn't sounds even like... realize this, but I stayed at two resorts down 
Down right by Mayakoba, probably. Yeah, uh huh. Because we stayed in Playa. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. That's right there. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's crazy. We, we were going. in. If you go to Cancun and then go south a little ways, Porto Morelos. Okay. Is where we stayed, which is, I think, south of Mayakoba just a little bit. No, north. North of it a little bit? Yep. Mayakoba is like two miles out of Playa. Interesting. Okay. Uh, just in other news, uh, there are parts of Mexico, I don't know that it's Cancun, but that are on like a no travel list. Like, don't Oh, they go. always are. They always are. It's normally yeah. the north uh, west side of Mexico. Yeah, yeah there are no like travel terrible. restrictions in Cancun, Cozumel. No, yeah, no. so that's Playa del Carmen to Too touristy, it would kill their economy and stuff like that. Having having stuff go on there, so you find that more out in Tijuana and over there. Right, right. They can't they can't afford to have that stuff going on on the beaches where everyone comes to, you know, vacation. Um, but I just thought that was interesting, and I, I put pictures of each course on our set list. And one of the things that stuck out to me. Well, the courses was Riviera Maya, just from a aerial view, looks 10 times more interesting. Or Maya Koba, I mean. Looks 10 times more interesting than the PJ National course does. So let The me PJ National this. course is just, like, house-lined and, like, boring. Which, which one will you be following this weekend? Which, which event? <sighs> I'm interested to see, and I did this with the first live event last year. I'm interested to see what the CW looks like. Interesting. Um, Can you imagine watch, walking Mayakoba? Look at how just vast this. It's huge. Jeepers. Super cool. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's so, I mean. I wrote a newsletter that I think we've gone a little bit more in depth on here with this podcast, but it was about this same topic. I kind of talked about breaking it, you know, breaking down where are you going to watch this week? What's, you know, which one would you watch? And I think in a vacuum, if it was just Honda versus Mayakoba or, you know, PJ Tour versus Live this week, I think the answer is Live this week. But when you take a 10,000 foot view of the thing and you go holy cow do we have some awesome tournaments on the PGA Tour with waste management was super fun uh, Riviera was, was fantastic and we know we're going to have two good ones in a couple weeks It's just it just feels like they obviously timed it uh, to, to play against the Honda you know in these, in these not designated events but it just feels like overall the PJ Tour is is winning this this head to head. Well, they're going to. They're, that's not the argument. I, the argument for me is let the guys play together. That's that's my argument. Okay, live live could become something greater than the PJ Tour with how much money they have, and Tiger and Rory can play by themselves with Billy Horschel. That'll be fun. And then all they'll have is their TGL. But but you can't you can't just say play together, because there's something to, you know, Rory winning a tournament and winning two million dollars, versus Brooks Kepka winning a tournament and winning four million dollars, and Brooks signing onto a guaranteed contract of one hundred million dollars, and Rory not getting that guaranteed contract at all. The they'll never be on the same level from that perspective. They can't just play together. Like, the majors are kind of offering that at this point, but they'll never be on the same plane. That, that's where I was going to lead. Why, why can't they? Why can't Why can't the Live guys play in the PGA Tour and play in the Live? Because of the guaranteed contract. Why wouldn't every... The, the PGA Tour becomes a uh, minor league system money wise and you can't tell no, because they have legacy 
And, and with, these de- with these designated events, they can say, hey, you guys need to be here for these events. If you can't make it to these events, you're not, you, you, can't, you can't play. But 3M doesn't have Legacy. Rocket Mortgage doesn't have Legacy. Um, Honda Classic actually kind of does. But yeah, but if, the, if they... If, the, if like, Scotty's <laughs> run last year, where he started at, what was it, the Waste Management, and he just started winning he won like every four, yeah. weekend you know what i mean like yeah. i'm talking about that type of stuff like i'm gonna keep on playing in the pga and i'm gonna miss some live tour events because i'm hot right now i'm playing against these guys i got my swing why would i want to mess it up and go play on a, on a different league with a different group of guys right now I'm, I'm staying here doing my thing and you know i'm going for a tiger woods record to beat how many wins consecutive wins or what whatever you know what i mean but I, I still think that, and even Tiger Woods said it, they, they, they're, they could coexist as long as they get rid of Greg Norman because everyone hates Greg Norman. And as long as they, that we drop our lawsuit and they drop their lawsuit and blah, 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 blah. So they've already said it can coexist. I, I'm struggling with how it works. It probably means that the Ryder Cup is gone and the president's cup is gone the president's cup feels entirely just gutted as it is because now you lost mito pereira you know you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. once you once you start to lose joaquin neiman like they just don't seem to care about that it's gonna be a pga tour versus live cup like well whatever that looks like match play event like it has to be because you've you've just lost too many names unless they coexist just let them coexist just let it happen your your sponsorships won't won't allow it i just don't think that your pga tour sponsorships will allow it because they would lose too many people to too many players if that were true there's no way that you would ever get rom and rory and spieth together except at live events because they can they can go make that money why wouldn't you go make that money? They'd be making both the money. N- none because of these they... guys. None of these guys are gonna miss the waste management. It is way too much fun. Way too cool. Okay. Because the tour has decided, but you have to pledge your allegiance to one to one tour or not. You don't have to do that. I, I suppose you, plays you don't the DP have to. World Tour. Yeah. But I just don't think I, do, I I think it's a sponsorship issue. There's no way that they would allow it. They would allow it to happen. Well, your golden child Tiger Woods said it. It could happen. So there is a way for it to happen. No, I think what he's saying is you pick, you pick your tour, and then that's it. And there's a way for them to, to coexist in that. Um, they maybe could play in like some sort of cup, and they are sort of coexisting because they're at the majors. I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting, and I still think we are figuring out exactly what this looks like and the relationship between the two tours. We are not going to get to a full swing breakdown this week, but that's okay because Sorry, you haven't seen. Catch up. Yeah, you haven't seen it all. Mm-hmm. Give me just kind of like a one minute recap of what you think so far. Um. You, you learn a lot about the players and their personalities. Um, you, you, I mean, Brooks Kepka, Kepka is who I thought he was. Um, Justin An Thomas. wet blanket. Justin Thomas. And, well, no, here's the thing. I like Brooks Kepka because he, he, he said it right. You know, I wasn't handed any of this stuff. I had to work for this and show people that I could play golf. That I, you know, just built his career off of showing up and just trying to play and contend with the best. And then he got hurt and then signed his deal with Liv. And Justin Thomas and, and Jordan Spieth, you knew those were the two frat boys that were, you know, doing their thing, all that fun stuff. I did like hearing the story about the the dude that took his shirt, shirt off at the waste management. Uh, uh, oh, Joel Damon. Joel, I wanted to say Brian Damon. But just like hearing his story is pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I love how uh, um, modest 
Matt Fitzpatrick was, you know, and his family and his his brother and that kind of relationship. And I'm still mm. not a fan of Tony Fino. That guy's just he wasn't nice. He shut me down. He shut me down <laughs> so hard. Yeah, well, yeah, you got you're a little sour. You're a little uh, sour. But right. I don't know the the I thought that episode did a pretty good job of of talking about him as a you know where his priorities are and making him a real person. You know. Yeah, Colin Morikawa, he's he's exactly the type of person I thought he was just by the way he dresses, you know, overly analyzing and organized and, all, you know, all that. Oh, how stuff. annoying was that scene where they're like, do these pants stretch enough? Are these, can we glove. do this color combo? You know, oh, it, it all oh, matters about all glove glove fits. Oh, yeah, it's got a little, it's got a little web right yeah. in here that I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> I just too particular, man. It's like. Yeah. I get it, you know, you're the best, one of the best in the world, so you got to feel good, you know. I can't wait till they start. Do they do one on Tiger and Rory and all those guys? Rory, uh, episode eight centers around Rory, the okay. last episode. I can't um, wait. Tiger, just kind of extra. He's just kind of ancillary. But a couple things I want to plug before we wrap up. Number one, the newsletter, like which I've been seconds. kind of. Yeah, I've been kind of uh, talking about more, or writing more about getting more out there. So go check that out. It's on Substack, MN Left Handers. Follow, like, subscribe for more of this stuff. We next week have an interesting week. It will again not be a preview. We've got a, a pretty cool episode for everyone. So come look, looking forward to that. All right, guys. Well, hit them fire, hit them straight, and uh, we'll see you next week, right? That's right. All right, we'll see you later, buddy.